morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday in Advent here at St. John Lutheran Church. It's good to be with you in God's house on this day. A couple of announcements before we begin worship. Uh, First of all, uh, this Wednesday we're having our final Advent Wednesday service. It will be a hymn sing, uh, but preceding the service, which starts at 6, there will be pizza served out in the commons that will start around 5 uh, 5 p.m. Also, I uh, direct you to the printed news and notes to uh, see the times for our Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. Uh, Some other news, uh, some good news. Uh, Matthew Frick has accepted the call to serve here at St. John Lutheran Church as a director of Christian community. So we praise God for uh, uh, the Holy Spirit leading Matthew to serve here. And so we look forward uh, to serving and working with him. Uh, And finally, uh, this is... Pastor Countryman's uh, last Sunday here, and so uh, this afternoon uh, there will be a farewell for him and his family uh, from 12 until 2 uh, over the gym, so we invite you to come join us for that. With that, let us go ahead and rise and greet one another in the name of Christ.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As I called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Old Testament reading for today is from Isaiah chapter 7. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey when he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the boy knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land whose two kings you dread will be deserted. The Lord will bring upon you and upon your people and upon your father's house such days as have not come since the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, the king of Assyria. This is the word of the Lord.
Today's epistle is from Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through, through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, who was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to, to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a sermon.
Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know if it's a perfect symmetry, but it is symmetrical. Six years ago to this day, December 18th, I preached my first sermon at 8 o'clock here at St. John Luther Church. We have a three-year lectionary series, so the gospel text is the same today as it was three years ago, as it was six years ago. And the sermon, well, in some sense, I would say every sermon I've preached has been exactly the same. One message. Jesus. Now, that, that sermon six years ago had a title. I, I had some anxiety, and that was part of the sermon. It was Noah Schrader who pointed out to me, you, you listened to it, I don't know, fairly recently, and, and so I listened to it again. Uh, and, and the title I gave it at the time was What's in a Name? Because the gospel lesson, well, it's about Jesus, and his name means the Lord saves. Uh, and then I talked about my mom stressing to me from early on that I needed to learn people's names. I know most of your names, not all of them. Uh, and, and I pointed out people in the pews. The first two Noah pointed out to me, I listened to it again, Rudy Braun, Larry Downing. They're with Jesus. And then reflecting and, and talking about the fact that, uh, boy, this is an adventure and I don't know exactly what's going to be ahead of us, but the only hope we have, the only hope I have is Jesus the one who has come to save his people from their sins. And then really, my sermon titles have been, it's still all about Jesus, part 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, B, C, D, then we stopped having three services a week, so it only went A, B, C. I don't know what number this is. I didn't count them all. Let's say 178, part B, because I preached it last night. But in a, in a message, in a paper, uh, I think the, the general structure is you're supposed to tell people what you're going to tell them, and then you tell them, and then you tell them what you told them. Well, I'll tell you, this is going to be all about Jesus. But what is in a name? Well, there's, a, there's an identity. In Jesus' name itself, it means the Lord saves. There is an intimacy to be able to call someone by name to have Jesus call you by name. I am Jesus' little lamb. Ever glad at heart I am. It's not far away, but close beside me, gently guides me, and maybe sometimes corrects me, always protects me, loves me every day the same, whether I am the model perfect sheep, or I'm the black sheep, even calls me by my name. And he has called us by his name. I think I started out the sermon up here six years ago, but it's not where I ended it. And I don't know how much that threw people off or didn't. I know one person in particular, she goes on Saturday night, she did not like it. And she let me know, and sometimes I would stay up there, but I, I think over time we got comfortable with one another, but I, I stood down here. Part of it was because I wanted to be connected to you, but, but also as we think about this text, um, this text from Matthew 1, 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way when his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came to, together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, check it out, lo, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And right here at the center, you shall call his name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. Not just reasonable disappointments 
or ridiculous disappointments like the Colts, and I was glad for Pastor Watt because he is a Vikings fan. Um, Colts setting a, a record for infamy. Um, but look, as a Colts fan and him as a Vikings fan, I must decrease so that you may increase. So, uh, <laughs> see, it's fun to have that uh, humor. I mean, those things don't really matter. But but they call his name Jesus not because he'll save them from you know moderate disappointment, but save his people from their sins. Because that's the problem, mine and yours. It's sin. It cuts us off from God. It cuts us off from one another. It divides in the end, unless Jesus comes back first, our very body and soul. Tears them apart. And this wasn't by accident, because all this took place to fulfill what God, who is always faithful to his promises, he keeps his word, what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, and you heard that, that reading from Isaiah. Behold, check it out. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name not only Jesus, but Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when, Jesus, when Joseph woke from his sleep, he was obedient. He did what the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. It is the, the last Advent reading before Christmas. It's the one that is, well, really the Christmas story. Well, we, we sang a hymn that is, is one of my favorites. It's, it's not, it's probably as well known. Um, it's one of my favorite Christmas hymns, 369, where shepherds lately knelt. And we also got to sing another of my favorites with, with the correct Helmsley. That's the tune for Lo He Comes with Clouds Descending. And I know, I think Ellen appreciated that, and so did Noah, and hopefully the rest of you maybe are growing to appreciate it. We didn't sing it to Picardy. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Jeff says yes, so I don't know, Pam. Maybe you ought to, you know, survey people. But, uh, um, I mean, I don't have strong opinions, but, I, yeah. Uh, Lo He Comes with Clouds Descending. Once for every sinner slain. But, but where shepherds lately knelt, that's, that's the middle of this sermon, of what I want to tell you. It is, a, it is a poem, it's a prayer, it's a story, it's a song. We, we are blessed in the church to sing the song of love that God has placed into our hearts. That's to sing of Jesus, that's to sing of the, the saving deeds of God, which are done in Christ. It was in 2018, Christmas Eve, that my oldest daughter Piper and I stood right over there. It was after I had preached uh, the Christmas Eve sermon where I was dressed up as a shepherd and we sang where shepherds lately knelt. She sang verse 1, I sang verse 2. The two of us kind of harmonized for the first half of verse 3 and then the choir came in beautifully and here you are again today and then everybody sang verse 4. Or at least you tried to sing it because you weren't familiar with it, maybe. But, but it's, the, it's written in first person, and here is this manger scene. I don't know how long this has been set up here. Uh, I mean, over the years, but uh, you can see it here. Where shepherds lately knelt, it looks like there are two shepherds, and kept the angel's word. And his first person singular, I come in half belief, a pilgrim, strangely stirred. I come in half belief. See, when my family and I were coming here six years ago, well, maybe that's, if I'm honest, maybe that's more than I came in. More, maybe it was, I mean, it's an overstatement. Maybe I came in quarter belief. Maybe I came in. 1% belief. I mean, it's, it's belief as small as a, nut, a mustard seed that's enough, but I come in half belief. Lord, I believe. Matthew 9, 24. It's a paradox. Lord, I believe the father who yearned for his son to be saved from the tyranny of demon possession, and he said, Jesus, can you save him? And Jesus says, well, all things are possible. All things are possible 
for the one who believes. And that father says, it's a paradox. It's the one in which I live. It's probably the one in which you live. Mark 9, 24. Mark 9, 24. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that my house is never going to sell. Right? That was part of it. It didn't, and I would tell you, the proof of God's love for me and my family is not in whether our house sells or we even break even. And right? We didn't break even. We just kept crashing through the floor. God provides. But it, but it wasn't just about the house selling. I wish, because that, that's not that big of a deal. What I was concerned about, what I was afraid of. So where shepherds lately knelt and kept the angel's word, I come in half belief, a pilgrim, one who is on this religious journey, following Jesus courageously. I come in half belief, a pilgrim strangely stirred. And then the hymn says, but there is room and welcome there for me. And, and, I, and I don't see myself, I know, I know that I'm not one of the, the wise men or the three kings bearing gifts. I don't even think I'm one of these shepherds. I know that I'm not Joseph. I'm certainly not Mary. I'm definitely not Jesus. I'm not the ox or the, the cattle here. I'm not even, and maybe some of you think it, right? <laughs> I'm, sure Joe. I'm, not the, I'm not the donkey, right? And neither are you. Well, something, uh, it's... This is about Jesus. I, but, but it says, but there is room and welcome there for me. And will my family and I be loved by you? I mean, I know we'd be loved by God. But would we be loved by you? Is there a place for me, for Andrea, for Piper, who didn't want to be here and took a year and a half to move here, two years in spirit, for Drew, I mean, for Oliver, for Drew, and there is room here. There's room for me. And, and at the center is Jesus. It, it, w- will there be room and welcome there for me? This congregation, I guess it's 170 years old, and some people have been sitting here in these pews holding them down for 170 years. And maybe you don't want to make room for other people. Maybe you do. Maybe you're on the quilt. Maybe you're not. But there is room. And my family and I have been loved not just by God, but by you and loved well. And then it says, in, in that unlikely place, I, find, I found him as they, or I find him as they said, sweet newborn babe, how frail, and in a manger bed. And it was, it was cool on, on Wednesday for my last chapel at St. John Lutheran School. We had two baptisms, Grant and Connor. And then, and then after the baptisms, that was exciting. We, we cheered, and then I got to give a message, and I walked over here and thought I could figure it out as I went, is what I usually do anyway, uh, and I grabbed this, and there were younger kids here, it must have been first graders, kindergartners weren't here, and I said, what, what do you see here, well this is Jesus, and he has this, this halo or crown on his head, and I said, what, what do you see what he's doing with his fingers, he's got his fingers raised in blessing, and that's pretty cool, and then one of the kids, I'd never noticed this, maybe you did, but I, I haven't noticed this, he's got his fingers raised in blessing, and then one of the kids said, hey, that's the same as up there. Well, these symbols are for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'd never seen that. But, but he is the spitting image of his Father. He's the proof of his Father's love. He's come to save sinners. But this is all about Jesus. Jesus at the center. I, I'm not the hero, neither are you. We're not Mary or Joseph. Not even the donkey. In that unlikely place, I find him, as they said, sweet newborn babe, how frail, and in a manger bed. And these beautiful words, a still small voice to cry one day for me. God is present in the whisper, and God is present in the shout, and God is present in just the spoken word and the song. A still small voice to cry one day for me, not that he cried because his, uh, well, he's wrapped in swaddling cloths here, not because his diaper was dirty or the, the, the donkey was getting too close or smelled funny, but, but this still small voice that would cry out from the cross. 
Father, forgive them. Because they're sinners, they, they don't know what they're doing. He, he would cry out, it is finished, and it's your salvation and mine. The voice that has called us by name to follow him. And then verse 3, it says, how, how should I not have known? Isaiah would be there. His prophecies fulfilled. And, and it's with pounding heart I stare. Well, of course, God is faithful. He said he was going to do this. But it's that, it's that aspect with pounding heart I stare. It takes courage to believe, to follow Jesus, to, to go on this adventure of faith, to, well, it's honesty about dependence on Christ Jesus, but also on the body of Christ. With pounding heart, Lord, I believe it's, but it's faint. Strengthen my heart. I'm losing heart. I have a hard heart. Soften my heart. It's out of rhythm with you. With pounding heart, I stare. A child, a son, the, the Prince of Peace for me. A child, a son, the Prince of Peace for me. This, in some sense, I have one sermon and I'm preaching the gospel according to Troy Countryman. It's not just for me, and it's all about Jesus. But it's, it's verse 4 then that it says, Can I? Will I forget? How love was born and burned its way into my heart, unasked, unforced, unearned. And, and that's my fear. It's forgetting. I don't know that it's God forgetting me, but maybe it's me forgetting God. Some people's fear is that they'll have pain that can't be, can't be soothed or won't go away, but mine is just losing my memory. And it's heartbreaking, you've been there, to be alongside other people. And maybe it's very slowly, the long goodbye or all at once. They don't know who they are or where they are or when they are. And I don't want to forget. But it happens, but, but faith this gift of the Holy Spirit that comes in through the ear and into the heart, it's, it's something that is intellectual, but it is also something that is very much physical. It's a part of our being. Is it possible that even if my mind would forget that my body wouldn't, that the body of Christ remembers? The one who never forgets us. Can I, will I forget how love was, was born because he is the proof of God's love for us. God loved the world in this way that he sent his son to save sinners. It was born and it burned its way into my heart unasked, unforced, unearned. To do what? To die. To live, and this is the best part, and not alone for me. This pilgrimage of faith, discipleship, is not just for Troy and Jesus. It's for us. And the song builds to this crescendo from first person singular to first person plural. We are in this. We have been called to follow Jesus. And not only did Jesus die for the people who are sitting here this morning, he died for people who don't even know and would that they would hear. He has died for people who have heard and seem to have forgotten or their hearts are hardened. Lord, have mercy. And that is our gift, our blessing to share and to tell this pilgrimage of faith. And maybe you have an image of these two Emmaus Road pilgrims. walking with Jesus. Their hearts burned.
They burned with the love of Christ. God is good, and the proof of that is in Jesus. And his goodness doesn't stop, but we have to be reminded of that. That we journey together, we journey with Christ. Uh, we, we are reminded as our hearts burn within us that, that we are Christ. We are his treasured possession. We're little Christ. who get to share that love. And so I'm going to tell you that, and then I'll tell you what I told you. And it's tied into the song. It's the last verse of the hymn we're going to sing today. Not as maybe unfamiliar as low he comes, or where shepherds lately knelt, but a little town of Bethlehem, and not to Forest Green. You can hear that tune if you want. That's the alternate tune. But it's verse 4 of a little town of Bethlehem. And this is what I'm going to tell you what I told you. It's, it says, uh, O oh, cho- holy child of Bethlehem. And you can see the, the hand. Pointing down. And standing here, depending on your angle, you can see the cross on the altar. And you can see the risen and reigning Christ. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. Cast out our sin. And do what? Enter in. Jesus, the one who is a savior, from sin, enter in. The life of faith is is one, it's faith in Jesus. It is honesty about dependence on Jesus, but I would say it is also a blessed codependence on Christ and one another. Cast out our sin and enter in. Be born in us today. This is the life of faith, every day anew. Martin Luther would say it this way, that the old Adam, the old Eve, would by daily contrition and repentance be crucified, and a new man, a new woman, be born, be raised to new life in Christ. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the messengers, the great glad tidings, the the good news, the gospel, tell and sing psalms and uh, songs and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. The great glad tidings tell, oh, come to us, Jesus, because it's always Advent. And then this word that I love, abide with us. Remain in us. Dwell in us. Live in us. Let us be marinated in you. O oh, come to us, abide with us, and here it is, our Lord, and what is his name? Not only Jesus, but Emmanuel, God with us. Cast out our sin, it gets in the way, and enter in, it's always Advent. Be born in us today. O oh, come to us, abide with us, Emmanuel, it is all gift in Jesus. It is all gift. And so thank you to you for being a gift to me and my family. Not because you're Jesus, but you're one redeemed by Christ because you are the body of Christ for loving us. Jesus is the gift, and he gives good gifts. He gives good gifts to us, his people. Amen. And now may the peace that passes understanding guard and keep our hearts and minds in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
confess now the Apostles' Creed. Please rise. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Before we continue with the prayer of the church, uh, to, we need to announce that uh, with sadness, our sister in Christ, Mary Jo Kristoff, died this last week, and so we lift up her family uh, in prayer, uh, trusting that uh, our, our Lord and Savior will grant his peace and comfort to them. And so the funeral, the visitation will be this Tuesday from 10 until noon, and the funeral will be 12 o'clock on Tuesday. And so let us pray. Almighty God, we give thanks for all your goodness and bless you for the love that sustains us from day to day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for the Spirit, the Comforter, for your Holy Church, for the means of grace, for the lives of all faithful and just people, and for the hope of the life to come. Help us to treasure in our hearts all that you have done for us, and enable us to show our thankfulness in lives that are wholly given to your service. Lord, in your mercy, Save and defend your whole church, purchased with the precious blood of Christ. Strengthen your faithful people through the word and holy sacraments, making them perfect in love and in all good works, and establishing them in the faith once delivered to the saints. And this week, we especially give you thanks for receiving Connor and Grant Hunt in baptism last week, that you have made them your children. Lord, in your mercy, grant your wisdom and heavenly grace to all pastors and to those who hold office in your church, that by their devoted service, faith may abound and your kingdom increase. We pray for also for all church workers, and we especially give you thanks that Matthew Frick has accepted the call to serve here at St. John as a director of Christian community. Lord, in your mercy, our preserve our nation in justice and honor that we may lead a peaceful life with integrity. Grant health and favor to all who bear office in our land. Lord, in your mercy, our sanctify our homes with your presence and bless them with joy. Keep our children in the covenant of their baptism and enable their parents to bring them up in lives of faith and devotion. Unite the members of all families in a spirit of affection and service that they may show your praise in our land and all the world. Lord, in your mercy, by your word and Holy Spirit, comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity. Be with those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those to whom death draws near and bring consolation to those in sorrow and we especially pray for the family of Mary Jo Kristoff. Grant them and all others a measure of your love, taking them into your tender care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. This time we continue worship by gathering our tithes and our offerings.
continue with the service of the sacrament found in the middle of page 5. I invite you to stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared proclaiming him the promised Messiah, the very Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and calling sinners to repentance, that they might escape from the wrath to be revealed when he comes again in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
This eating and drinking of Christ's body and blood strengthen you and preserve you in both body and soul into life everlasting. Depart in the peace of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you've given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.